What is going on guys? Welcome to a new video. As you can see, it is sweater weather, it's cozy boy season. Um, but the topic of this video today is going to be about scanning film negatives with a digital camera. So if you guys have been watching since the vlogging days of this channel, you'll recognize Dan, he's one of my best friends, but he has this home scanning setup with his digital camera. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, he's in the process of converting a lot of old family photos and scanning the film negatives with his camera. And so I thought it'd be really interesting to uh, compare the results that I get from the lab that I go to downtown camera versus this kind of home scanning method with Dan's digital camera. So if you like film photography, digital photography, videography, um, then you come to the right place, maybe like and subscribe. And without any further ado, let's head to Dan. Okay, this is the setup right here. You wanna... Dan's mirrorless camera, film holder. Mm, my phone is a light source. Let's do it macro lens all right now we gotta check if everything was good, mm -hmm. I did focus with the settings. Yeah, it's at the end of that. Is this the raw file, RAF? Mm -hmm. Please don't touch my RAF. 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 I'm gonna take these back home and edit them all, but the initial difference that you see is crazy. So much more detail with like literally a raw photo scan. And uh, pretty stoked because the photos look kind of a lot better. And the one thing that I noticed that I said to Dan was that all these like guys that I watch on YouTube, like Valandes and Willem, uh, shot by Shingy, like they all scan a lot of their own photos too. And the photos now that I took look a lot more like theirs in terms of like the colors and stuff. And they did when I just got like the regular JPEG scans from uh, the place that I go to get my film developed. So that's kind of cool too, but uh, a fun process. You got this set up so you could scan a bunch of like old family photos and stuff with like the negatives. So this is like an old print photo on 120 from like 120 film, of like his grandpa on a typewriter. And look at the, the photo negative. Just put it tiny. <laughs> like I think it's 110 film format, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, let's go do that too. We are back in the studio. It was actually a lot of fun taking uh, the scans I guess, of the negatives and kind of converting them and seeing uh, the results. Um, but I just want to kind of go through a little bit more of the process and then of course show you guys um, some of the negatives and how they how they convert and how they look at the end of the day and compare them to the scans that I got from downtown camera. Just to quickly run down the actual scanning process. So Dan got a macro lens for his Fujifilm camera and basically um, it's looking top down and we had a film holder there and then we used my phone as a light source, just a completely white background, turned up full brightness and then essentially you just snap a photo of the negative in that film holder, trying to frame it up as close as possible and of course having it in focus and then also of course the file in uh, raw format. And then from there, yeah, just going through and you know, once you kind of have it set up, it's easy because you just like snap the photos pretty quickly and then you import them into Lightroom and then there's a program or a plugin called Negative Lab Pro. And so that is a great program um, that I know a lot of different photographer or film photographers use to do like at home scanning. Um, and then that's just a way to convert the negative into an actual color image. So I know I already did the one kind of on the spot there um, when I was at Dan's, but I went ahead and did um, some more scanning. So I just wanted to kind of show what the results of some of those were. I'm going to take some of my favorite photos from the last video with my buddy Omar. Um, and kind of compare those results there um, so you guys can see. 
So the first thing that you have to do is go ahead and and sort of crop all these negatives to make sure you don't have like any of the border um, of like the film holder. And unfortunately with this film holder, you can't get the borders of the actual film. So you can't get that like Portra 400, um, which is kind of unfortunate because that's always a pretty cool look to include with, with film photos. But yeah, basically the first step is just going through and cropping everything um, with that. So we will speed through this. So we got that done. Um, I just picked a few of my favorite photos, like the ones that I included um, in the video and talked about. And so basically from here, once I got them cropped, just go control N, sources, digital camera, color model, frontier is kind of the standard that everyone uses. Pre-saturation is three at default, border buffer, because I already cropped everything. I'm just gonna go zero, and then I'm gonna hit convert six negatives, and then just wait a little while while that happens. Okay. So how's everyone doing these days? Maybe leave a comment down below. I've been doing, we're going into like wave two of COVID, which kind of sucks. Everything's like shutting back down again. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to get out there, take some nice photos, enjoy the fall weather. Uh, you know, sweater season, hoodie season, sweater weather. What I want to do is just give you guys a quick comparison to um, what it looks like originally from downtown camera, that original scan, and then just the scan that I get from this method of scanning um, without any doing any edits. So, so this is on this photo on the left here, we have that scan from uh, downtown camera. This is after I've you know already kind of done my edits, and this is the um, scan here with the digital camera. So pretty similar there. Um, definitely have to make some adjustments because Omar's face is like is pretty red, um, so I'd make that adjustment there. This definitely looks a bit more red as well. Probably bring that back down um, for the skin tones, but I really like. And this is what I noticed in that first photo as well, how the blues turn out, especially in the sky. Like I said earlier, it kind of reminds me of some of like Vulandis's work and like how his photos look um, once they're scanned. But another thing that I definitely notice as well, it's definitely sharper, which kind of makes sense uh, because, you know, this is a JPEG scan versus like a raw image file. And then also definitely some more detail like in this comparison photo here if we're comparing um, like the face there's definitely some more detail like on this left side of his face it's kind of a bit more shadowed and this is definitely a lot more even um, in the scan that we did with the digital camera um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post uh, the comparisons between the final scan from downtown camera and my edits with them and then the final scan with my edits from the digital camera I just post them up here so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun making it, um, you know, doing something that's completely new to me. Um, and just again, with this whole film photography and photography journey in general, just, you know, constantly learning new things and doing things differently. Um, I really enjoyed this. And I think, you know, for future things, I will be trying to scan as much of my own work as possible. I'll probably still get the digital scans from downtown camera because of course, that way it's just um, easier and then you can just edit them. I might try to compare them to the TIFF files as well and see what the, the difference is there. Um, but yeah, for this, that's, that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe if you wanna stay tuned for more. Um, we're gonna be coming out with some more photography, definitely some fall film videos in the making as well, uh, you know, with all the, the fall leaves and the fall colors. Ontario looks pretty beautiful, actually. So thank you guys again so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.